So in this video, I want to derive a series representation for Laguerre polynomials. So you'll recall from last time that we defined Laguerre polynomials like this. We said that uh, the nth Laguerre polynomial, ln of x, was given by e to the x over n factorial times d to the n dx to the n of this product right here, x to the n e to the minus x. And so uh, what I want to do here is turn this expression right here into a series. And the way that I'm going to do that is by using something called the general Leibniz rule. And the general, the general Leibniz rule is a, a way of writing an, a generalized product rule. So we know how to do a product rule when it's just a first derivative acting on two functions, say f and g. But what happens when we have an nth derivative? Uh, then what is the expression? Well, the expression is this, and it's, it's very... It's very easy, and it looks a lot like the binomial theorem. Uh, it's a sum from k equals 0 to n, and choose k, so we have our binomial coefficient. And then it is the n minus k, kth derivative of f, times the kth derivative of g. So, so yeah, you can, you can sort of see the parallel with the binomial theorem here because we have this binomial coefficient and then something kind of like the binomial theorem where we have an n minus k on one term and, the k on, and a k on the other term. Okay, uh, so let's actually apply this then uh, to our definition for our Laguerre polynomial. So when we apply that here, what do we get? We get that this whole thing right here is equal to e to the x over n factorial sum k equals 0 to n of, of what? Uh, dn minus k, dx n minus k, x to the n times d to the k, dx to the k, e to the minus x. Okay, so if we can evaluate these two derivatives right here, uh, then we're done. Then, then, we've, uh, then, we, then we'll have a nice closed form formula for this expression right here. Uh, so let's do that. Let's, let's evaluate these two guys right here independently. And I'll start by doing uh, this one on the right, because that's the that's going to be the easier one. So the kth derivative of e to the minus x, well, that, that's easy. We know that uh, taking a derivative of e to the alpha x just pulls down alpha. So in this case, this is just going to be equal to minus 1 to the k times e to the minus x. Okay, so, so nothing too difficult about that. Uh, what about uh, this guy right here? So this is a little harder one. We have d to the n minus k over dx to the n minus k of this x to the n right here. Well, what's this guy going to be equal to? Well, let's think about it for a second. So we know that, for example, and, and maybe it's useful to work through a few examples. So so let's, let's say we take k equaling 0. If we take k equal to 0, then what happens? We're taking an nth derivative of x to the n. So what are we going to? So what are we going to get in that case? Well, in that case, we're going to essentially just differentiate this guy all the way down to one. So we're going to be uh, we're, go we're going to have a uh, an n and an n minus one all the way down to one with no x remaining. Uh, and so this is going to give us uh, just an n factorial, uh, just an n factorial in that case. What about if we pick k equaling one? What about that case? Well, k equal to 1, that's similar. We're, we're going to take n minus 1 derivative, so we're gonna, this n is going to drop down to 1. So we're going to have an x left. And then we're also going to have this n factorial, right? Because we're, I mean, because what's happening? We're, we're doing n times n minus 1 all the way down to 2. Because we're, we're taking the derivative of x squared, and that'll give us a 2, and then we're leaving this x behind. And so that's actually exactly the same as... as uh, this n factorial right here. I mean, the only difference between these two is that if you took another, another derivative of this guy down here, this x would go away and you'd get a, a contribution of 1. And, and that won't change our n factorial. So, so this is what we get in that case. Uh, what about k equaling 2? What about this case? Well, we know we're going to have an x squared. But now things are going to be a little different, right? Because now uh, when we pull down n's, we're going to have an n times an n minus 1 times an n minus 2 all the way down, not to 1, so it won't be an n factorial, but all the way down to 2. Uh, so it'll be uh, n factorial divided by 2. n factorial divided by 2. 
because we're, we're essentially, we're, we're doing this n factorial all the way down to three, um, because we're not doing this derivative right here to pull down to two. Uh, and so, and so this is what we're left with. And, and you can keep doing this for k equals three, four, five, and six. And what you see is that for arbitrary k, you get n factorial over k factorial times x to the k times x to the k. And just as a just as a nice check, you know, it's good to check the endpoints. So we know that if we pick uh, k equals zero, k equals zero, we get n factorial. That's good. If we pick n equal k, well, n equal k, in that case, uh, we don't take any derivatives, and uh, we see that we just have these two cancel, giving, giving us one, and we have x to the k, which is also equal to n, so x to the n. And so we see that for n equal k and for k equals zero, uh, this, this expression makes sense, and as, as we've argued, it also makes sense for all these other cases. And so, uh, so this expression right here is going to be n factorial over k factorial times x to the k. Okay, great. Now let's plug that into our expression right here. So if we plug that in, what do we have? We have e to the x over n factorial, a sum from k equals zero up to n. And then what do we have? We have, um, and actually it looks like I dropped an n choose k here. So we have n choose k, right? Because it comes right from that, times n factorial over k factorial x to the k, so that's this term right here. Then we have this term as well. We have minus 1 to the k, e to the minus x. Okay, great. And right here we can see immediately that a whole bunch of terms are going to cancel out. So we have this, um, right, so we have this e to the minus x canceling with this e to the x. We have two n factorials right here. And so we can combine everything at last and what we get is this. We get that L sub n of x is equal to sum from k equals zero to n, n choose k minus x to the k, right? Because we have minus one to the k, x to the k, so minus x to the k over k factorial. And that's it. That's our, that's our series representation for our Laguerre polynomial. This is actually, and this is actually really nice, right? Because this sort of combines everything that we love and are familiar with about series, right? So, because we have, we have this binomial coefficient, which we know from the binomial series. We have this k factorial, which we only see in Taylor series, and then x to the k, also like Taylor series, and then an alternating term with this minus sign right here. And so this, this series is actually uh, very nice and sort of combines all, all the stuff that we, we know and love about series into, into one single expression. So this is something that's good to remember because it's going to, I mean, first off, it's really pretty. And also it's going to come up a bit when we look at some other properties of the Laguerre polynomials. So this is going to be something good to uh, be familiar with. Um, so I think I'll stop there. In the next video, I'm going to look at the generating function for Laguerre polynomials. And we'll see just how useful this series expression can be. So I hope to see you in the next video.